Hi, this is a cool animation I came across, and today I'll be showing you how I'd code this in order to reduce the amount of CSS needed. Because as you can see, there's quite a bit going on here, and I believe I can simplify it and reduce it to about half of it. Okay, so let's see. We're going to start with a box, and within it we're going to have a loop. So um, five times. Uh, so only five times because we won't have a, a bottom face. So uh, box face items in here. And it doesn't matter what preprocessor we use, or we can just use no preprocessor because there's not uh, that much in there in terms of structure. Here we'll be setting an edge length, and let's say something like 5 ms, and also an in radius, which for the square is half the edge length, and also for uh, the cube. We can compute it properly, but it's always half. Uh, next, we position all our divs absolutely. Okay, now having done this, we start uh, putting stuff on the screen. So um, for all box face uh, elements, we're going to have a padding equal to that uh, in radius. And let's set the background just so that we can see them. And as you can see, they're all stacked on top of each other there. Let's also change this to something like this. Put it in the middle, so top 50% vertically and horizontally left 50%. Okay, now make it dead in the middle because now the top left corner is in the middle. So um, add a margin minus that same inner radius. Okay, now the faces are dead in the middle. Uh, something else we want to set is transform style preserve 3D so that we can have 3D transforms on the children of this box that we also want to transform in 3D. So uh, if we want to have 3D transforms on the children of an element that's also transformed in 3D, we need to set the transform style preserve 3D on the parent element so that its children don't get flattened. OK, uh, having done this, let's set transform, rotate Y 45 degrees. And we're also going to want to rotate uh, around the uh, X axis, so rotate X let's say minus something like 30 degrees, but this is just the random and it's not the final value we'll use. Uh, what we want is to have that corner in front coincide with the corner in the back. Now, those two corners are um, united by uh, the cube diagonal. So those uh, two corners coincide individually means the cube diagonal is horizontal. And in order to have the cube diagonal horizontal, we need to rotate it. Uh, by the angle between this cube diagonal and the diagonal of the top face that you see right there. And we can get that angle out of the right triangle formed by the cube diagonal, the diagonal of the top face, and that vertical edge in the back right there. OK, so we're going to need a bit of trigonometry. So um, that's going to be import compass CSS3 so we can have access to uh, trigonometric functions. And here we're going to be having minus 1, so that um, it goes in the opposite uh, direction of the normal rotation. Uh, arc tangent. And we're going to have 1 over square root of 2, of 2, sorry. Uh, because um, the edge length is going to be um, this uh, L, and the diagonal is going to be this L times square root of 2. So basically, um, the L's cancel each other, and we're left with 1 over square root of 2. And this returns a unitless radian value, so we need to multiply with 180 degrees and divide by pi. And we're going to get our proper angle value this way. Um, oh, multiply. Yeah. Now it works. OK, having done this, we need to set uh, some transforms on the faces so that uh, they're positioned so they form a cube. So first off, we're going to have rotate 3D. And we're going to have two vector components, i and j, for the x and y axis. And the third one is always going to be 0. And then we're going to have a calc. And we're going to have a multiplier, which is 1 initially, multiplied by 90 degrees. And then we're going to have, OK, what is happening? OK, that seems fine. I don't know what is happening. So uh, translate along the z-axis by that inner radius. 
OK, now we're going to set uh, the first one is initially 0. And j is going to be uh, the additive inverse. Uh, not not that, uh, that additive inverse, uh, the complementary. So um, it's going to be 1 minus i. So when 1 is 0, the other one is 1. And when it's 1, the other one is 0. So 1 is 0, and the other one is 1. So basically, it's like uh, a switch. OK, so um, having done this, we're going to start to position stuff and change that to m. Oh, that's what's wrong. OK. Um, so yeah, we're going to uh, start something else before anything else. So um, background like this. Now, nth child 1, and here we'll be setting uh, m to 0. Um, actually, just uh, copy paste this. Uh, and for uh, 3, we'll be setting m to 2. Again, um, and then we're going to have um, right. So a uh, four. Yeah, I busted that. Uh, three, and this is going to be five. So they're positioned. Uh, uh, no, we're just going to let. Uh, uh, we're just going to switch i to one here. OK, and we're also going to set the background uh, light, uh, lighten. OK, so that uh, the top face is lighter. OK, uh, now something else I want to do is introduce um, a translation along this uh, x-axis. Because we've rotated the cube, and now uh, the x-axis in, is in this direction, pointing that way. So. Um, so translate x, right? And here, after everything, we'll have a translate a calc minus 1 times x. Um, yeah. OK, that's, um, that's correct now. And um, we need to register this custom property. So uh, register property uh, name x syntax. So this is basically the type. And it's going to be a length value, initial value, uh, 0 pixels. And we can't have 0 m's or anything of the kind, because um, m depends on the context, so it depends on the font size. So we need to have something that doesn't depend on the context. And here, inherit, false. OK, now having done this, we should get, uh, yeah, we're seeing the cube again. So x is uh, 0 initially. And um, the thing is, we're going to animate the five faces and then the cube itself. So we're going to have uh, 5 plus 1 animations. So n is going to be equal to 6. OK, so now here we're going to have a set of keyframes. So um, but actually, we'll make them in a loop. So for i from 0 to n, we're going to have keyframes uh, x um, i. And here we're going to have uh, 0 percent and um, i times 100% over n. And here we set x to 0 pixel. OK. Having done this, um, here we're going to have i plus 1 instead. So um, one extra step up to 100%. OK. Actually, uh, we don't really need uh, that 0% uh, because it's on uh, default at 0. Um, and here we'll be setting it to 
the edge length. Okay, having done this, we're going to set an animation, right? Um, but first, we need to uh, set an animation duration. So, um, uh, n times something like this doesn't really matter. So here we set animation. And it's going to be x5. So the last one, uh, that animation duration is out infinite. Now uh, here we should yeah it works. Uh, here we'll be setting animation uh, inherit. Okay, having done this, um, we'll be setting animation name. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, let's set it uh, for each of these. So uh, let's set it for each of them. So here we'll be having, right uh, there. Um, now here we'll be having animation name a one um, here it's going to be two um, here it's going to be four um, and we'll be having nth child uh, two this is going to have three right so um, this should do it we should see it working yep it is working. So um, it's first the one on top, which is the fifth face, then it's the one here, which is the first face, then that one, which is the third face, then the one uh, there in the back, which is the second face, and then this one, which is uh, the fourth face. Okay, so yeah, uh, that works. A little something we can uh, add extra is um, just uh, a background. But uh, other than that, we are done. So yeah, this is what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you like the work that I've been putting out for more than 80 years and uh, you want to support it, you can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. Or you can get me something off my Amazon wish list. The links are going to be in the description, both for the Patreon uh, account and for my Amazon wish list. Or you can at least share this to show the world like Emilian Mitzia says these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time.